The year is over. What a year. This is my review of top drives in 2023. 2023 was a big year for me. I went from being a player who tried really hard to win challenges to someone who actually started finishing in the top 10 in most tri-series. Challenges playing against the game are generally easier than tri-series events playing against other players. So advancing to have a garage that can compete against other established players is a big uplift in my gameplay. The big highlight for me this year was the awesome fun I had with the Black Friday packs, which prompted me to start this YouTube channel. I hope you like the videos I've put out on this channel so far. I will try to keep up to date with what's going on in top drives and hopefully I'll see those subscriber numbers growing. The first prize car of the year was given out on New Year's Day from the Tri-Series that started in late December 2022. It was for the absolute game-changing Lotus Evia. This car has no acceleration curve. It's 0 to 228 instantly. It's a truly amazing car that I'm so lucky to have won. The next Tri-Series prize car I won was the Lancia LC1 Spider. It's a proper motorsport car, which unfortunately hasn't turned out to be that useful. The third Tri-Series at the end of the January was for the BMW M5 CS. It's a Black Forest legendary that again hasn't been overly useful. The Year of the Rabbit Challengers won me the legendary Lotus GT4. Again, I've not used it that much at all. Not a great month after getting the amazing Lotus on New Year's Day. In February, 111 new cars were added to the game in Update 18. Called Learn the Savannah Way, it was all Australian cars, including a lot of Holdens. No legendaries included at all. We would have to wait another five months to get the legendary Brabhams added to the game. The challenge series this month was called Love Me, Love Me Not and paid out the Celine S7 prize car. I failed to win the Ultima RS from the first tri-series of the month, but managed to get hold of the Mercedes C11 in the second. The Mercedes C11 is one of my favourite cars. I managed to max it over the last six months and it's been so useful in all sorts of events. In March, the Tri-Series events were for the Bugani Imola and the Expo GTX, both of which are good cars. The Great Outdoors Challenge got me the Morgan Aero 8 race car and also in March, through the London Games Challenge series, paid out some amazing packs, including a guaranteed legendary pack. In the March Veterans Challenge, I picked up the Porsche 935 Moby Dick. I had been holding off getting it previously, choosing rather to grab the epic prize cars on offer, but this time there wasn't anything interesting to me, so I grabbed the Porsche. I need to put some upgrades in it because it does get used, but everyone has it, so I really need to put some upgrades in it to make it a key car. April saw the Pacific Coast Highway update drop, including 138 American cars, mainly from Ford, Lincoln and Mercury. Some pretty good epic dragsters and off-roaders, but the update was nothing special. No pullable legendaries in the packs, which takes some of the thrill out of opening packs. The Electric Excellent Challenge won me the Alpha 155, which I've barely used. I won both Tri-Series this month for the Audi R10 and the Nissan GTR LM Nismo. Two similar race cars, they get used but not enough to upgrade them. May's Immortalising Carbon Challenge Series won me the Mercedes AMG GT4, which is a good looking car but totally useless so far. The Tri-Series was for the Ginetta G56. I was successful and it's now sitting in my garage not being used. The second Tri-Series, however, was for the Arash, which meets a lot of event criteria, so it does get a lot of use. It's a pretty good on the drags. In June, we were promised so much from the CarWow partnership, but in reality, it was just another challenge for a previously issued legendary prize car. For me, this was great because I got my hands on the Peugeot 405 Pikes Peak. I love the high-end four-wheel drive off-road rally cars, so this was a great result for me. The Tri-Series, however, was not a great result. It was for the back mono, and I came in Tier 3 missing out on the prize. It was a hard blow for me, because I did have a hand for Tier 2, but circumstances in my bracket stopped me from winning it. I got over it pretty quick, as it's not turned out to be anything special. 
The second Tri-Series was for the Porsche 911 GT1, which is an OK car. In July, the new Update 20 added a massive 366 cars with the Asia Pacific Grand Prix tag. It contained cars from Japan, South Korea and a small number from Australia. The significant new brand that was added was Hyundai. It was a good mix of great cars and basic average cars. In July, I won both Tri-Series for the Audi R18 and the Porsche RS Spider. Similar cars with similar stats. The GT Series returned with a challenge for the Tiny Alpha 177. I won that and use it when I can. At the end of July, I won the Resvani Beast Alpha X Blackbird Prize from the Road's Most Travelled Challenge series. It was good to get it as it completes my Resvani collection. August Tri-Series were for the Bugani Hyra R and the seriously fast Kunizeg Jesko Attack. I won both of these cars and the Jesko Attack is very useful. The top speed is crazy high, so it's always top of the list for the test bowls when it meets the criteria. The Unicorns challenge was too hard for me, and I failed to get the Dodge Durango in the last challenge. Not a big issue as it seems. I'm okay missing out on a few prize cars, especially if it's an American dragster. Let's face it, I've got plenty of them. The challenge series in September called Cutting Edge was for the Ford Falcon prize car. I did finish it and was pleased to get the great dragster from Australia in my garage. It's definitely been useful since. The 1st of September's Tri-Series got me the all-surface tyre Audi S1, which has been a massive boost to my garage since I don't own the Suzuki Pikes Peak. It is now maxed and very useful, not only on mixed tracks but also on city streets with speed bumps. The September GT Series was for the Hyundai Ioniq. I missed out on this one as well. It needed too many upgrades in my legendaries to get it, so I just let it go. It wasn't worth wasting the fuse material. October's challenge was photo finish for the off-road Hyundai i20. I like off-road cars, so hopefully it will be useful. I was very pleased to get it, as I'd missed out on the performance tyre Hyundai a month before. I haven't used it much yet, but I'm sure it will come in handy in the future. I wasn't overly interested in the Tri-Series for the standard tyre Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 8. Over the last six months, a ton of new standard tyre cars have been added to the game, and I'd already pulled the non prize car, Mitsubishi Evolution 4, that's one RQ less. That said, I did win it. The second Tri-Series was for the Ginetta G58. I won it, and it would be useful if I didn't already have the British Lotus Evia that is maxed. It's in my garage, in case I need it. There was also an awesome Tri-Series trial for the Lancia Delta S4 Rally, which is now one of my best off-road cars. I've just finished maxing it 323 because it regularly wins me stuff, so it's well worth putting the fuses into it. Another four-wheel drive standard tyre legendary was up for grabs in the Tri-Series for the BMW Shining Shadow. Again, I wasn't that bothered. I didn't try too hard. You know what I mean? Didn't open all the packs chasing specific cars, that kind of stuff. In the end, I had enough of a good hand to win it. The second Tri-Series of November was for the serious Hennessy Venom F5. I've used my yellow Hennessy so much over the past year, but now this new version has taken its place as the most awesome Hennessy in my garage. Another Tri-Series trial was released in November, where I managed to get hold of the Hyundai RN22, which has not been useful yet. The Challenge Series was Nightmare Fuel, for the great dragster that is the TVR Cerberus Speed 12. This is my only TVR legendary, and it's a really useful car. It's the best TVR in the game. In November, Update 21 arrived, bringing another 320 cars to the European New Wave tag. This added both Skoda and Radical into top drives. The update has been a good one. Plenty of great cars. So far, I'm doing okay with collecting them. As I said earlier, my most significant week in top drives this year was Black Friday week. The pack offers were crazy. Never before seen offers that I took full advantage of. Black Friday this year was so significant for me. It elevated me as a player. I invested in it heavily because it was an opportunity to leap forward with pulling new legendaries and also importantly, 
pulling plenty of epics and ultra rares to use as upgrade fuse material. Having a large surplus of unlocked epics and ultra rares has allowed me to upgrade some great cars and some useful cars. Black Friday was also the moment in which I decided to start a Top Drives YouTube channel. I had been thinking about it for a while. I really enjoy the video editing process. So pulling 21 legendary cars across all those offers was a great jumping off point. I hope it's worth it. I hope my videos start to get some traction on YouTube and that I can keep growing as a channel through 2024. I hope you will stick with me on that journey. So we've got to December, this month. The Tri-Series at the beginning of the month was for the all-service tyre Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT. It was a good Tri-Series for me. Of course, now we're talking about December, you can actually watch the videos associated with the events and challenges I'm covering here. The GT Series for the Brabham BT62 Ultimate Track Car went well too. I obviously haven't had time to use it yet, but for a GT Series, it's a very high RQ, and it's also now my best Australian car. The challenge series in December was Chariots of the Gods. From this challenge, I won the Italian 70s car from Alfa, the Alfa Romeo Tipo. It's going to be very useful in the pre-80s daily event, which comes around every few weeks. Along with a few Christmas events, there was a repeat of the Black Friday pack opening yesterday, with the opening of one of the Christmas 12 times titanium packs, which resulted in some pretty cool pulls. There will be another one in a couple of days' time. These two big mega pack openings finishing off my year, it's a great way to go out. I'll leave you to watch those two videos and see the cars I pull. Trust me, it's worth it. They're really good videos. And that was my summary of 2023 in Top Drives. There were loads of packs opened and a ton of great cars added to my garage. I can't cover them all here, but 2023 was a big year for improving my garage and improving my positions in the competitive side of the game. Let's see what 2024 brings. I hope you'll join me on that journey. Let me know in the comments what your favourite car you won or pulled from pack was this year. Thanks very much for watching. Happy New Year. All the best. Now get yourself out of here. 2023 is done.